Hello and thank you for clicking on my video. Today we're going to talk about DNA and it's quite some to talk about, so let's get started. DNA is the abbreviation for the uh, components that make up the structure of the DNA. It is the oxyribonucleic acid and as you can see on the poster, I marked the D, N and A. The oxyribose is the sugar, which plays an important uh, part of the backbone of the DNA. And nucleic acids are the four different bases, which carry the information for the DNA. The DNA is uh, found in the cells as a double helix, which is the carrier of all information and instructions for the survival of the organism. Included are informations for the development and the growth and the reproduction of the organism and also for many different functions. But before we come um, to the topic how the information is encoded, we want to first talk about the structure. As I said before, the DNA um, contains a sugar and a base and also a phosphate. A phosphate, a sugar and a base together make up a nucleotide and they are arranged next to each other and are attached by the phosphates as you can see on the poster again also. The sugar as I mentioned before is deoxyribose and the bases can be four different kind of bases in DNA which are cytos um, cytosine, guanine, adenine and thymine. Cytosine and thymine of those are pyrimidines, and guanine and adenine are purines. That doesn't have to say you much more than that, it's just a classification. And these base pairs are connected to each other with hydrogen bonds. Adenine and thymine are connected by two hydrogen bonds, that's due to their um, molecular structure. And cytosine and guanine are connected by three bones. Um, both strands of DNA, as I mentioned before, DNA is a double helix, contain the same information, which is encoded in these bases. And um, so how do we get the information, how to build a protein from bases? The DNA is split it up and then a part of it is copied. This is signalized by triplets of bases. Always three bases together code for one amino acid. And there are special codes of triplets which tell the, uh, tell the cell to start or to stop copying. The start codon is AUG, so adenine, uracil, guanine. Uracil is the kind of cousin of thiamine, which is used in RNA. And um, when A, U and G as a triplet appears, then the cell knows that they have to start copying here. And there are three different stop codons, which signalize the cell that here is the end line of copying. And as we have 64 possible triplets and only 20 naturally occurring amino acids, there are many possible combinations left which then are unused? No. Multiple codes are used for the more frequently used amino acids. As you can see on the poster, for example, isoleucin has three different codons. And also amino acids that have a similar property usually tend to have similar triplet codes. So that even though the cell maybe makes a mistake in the um, amino acid configuration, that the, proper, the property will be so similar that the protein is still functioning. So the next question is, which processes can the DNA go through? So what can the body do with the DNA? First of all, when a cell divides from one to two, from two to four, from four to eight, then we need more DNA. We have to copy the whole material because every somatic cell has to have the whole genetic information. So the DNA is replicated. So it makes the exact same copy, which is then um, within the two new cells. Then also we can, as mentioned above, 
uh, make from DNA a protein. For that, we first have to scan out which sequence of G DNA is needed to produce exactly this protein. This is made by the transcription. All these process, processes I will explain in a, another video again. But so from DNA to MR, mRNA, we have to transcribe the DNA. So now in a mRNA, it's only single stranded. And then this mRNA is translated into the amino acid sequence by the use of this genetic code. So that always three bases, code for one amino acid, and then the amino acid sequence will be the primary structure of the protein. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of information needed to be encoded to contain everything that is needed for a human body, all the functions, all the different characteristics, everything that the body has to know about itself. So it can't just be lying around somewhere in the cell. It's packaged very densely in eukaryotic cells and is packed into chromosomes. So you can kind of imagine it like a ball of wool, which is wrapped around each other to be more dense and more easy to store. So the DNA is not just coiled around itself, but there are positively charged proteins called histones. And the DNA is wrapped around this to make it easier to be stored in the nuclei. Nucle and the DNA is charged negatively. Maybe that's interesting to know so that it's more easy to wrap the negatively charged DNA around the positively charged proteins. I drew down here in the poster that um, there are different kinds of histones which together build an octamere, so that's the H3 and H4 histones which together build a tetramere, so there's a dimer of each the H3 and the H4, they together build a tetramere, and then there's another tetramere again of two dimers of the H2A and H2B histones, they together, together build a histone octamere and then the DNA can wrap around this. Um, this octamere together with the DNA is called a nucleosome and the nucleosome then again is uh, wrapped around itself and is coiled up to build the chromosomes but that's material for the next video. Thank you for watching. That's it with the DNA. I hope you learned something. I would be very happy if you could subscribe so that I'm supported to continue with my videos.